Everybody, we have a little special presentation here. Uh, we cover uh, college football every week. We, we we cover the top fifteen, but we are huge, huge Tennessee fans. So we are going to pull out our segment on the. We are not distracted from realism. No, no, no. We are going to pull out our segment talking about the Tennessee Georgia game, and we're going to put it right here. And we're going to put it just right here to the side for you, so you can just watch it whenever you want to. So check it out. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump on into our week 10. Uh, we'll jump right on into the biggest game of the year so far. Uh, by far the biggest game of the year. Uh, by the AP poll, it's number one, Georgia, versus number two, Tennessee. By the college football, the college playoff. football playoffs, which came out at 7 o'clock on Tuesday night, it is number one, Tennessee. Which is... Shockingly, which was no shock to many people. Yeah, uh, it is. It's a. I, I, I'm still trying to wake up from the dream and make sure that we're Number really this one. this good this year. But Tennessee, after the rankings come out, Alabama is six, LSU is ten. Tennessee has two top ten victories in the past month. One of them on the road that you beat somebody by twenty seven points on the road. Splendid, splendid. And then you stop. A really good Kentucky team. Kentucky, that was the bad Kentucky team. You beat them by 38 points. That was not even close. Okay. That was not even close. And now Tennessee goes to Georgia, which Who is... Criminally under, I think, three is low for them. They dropped Georgia to three in the... I think that's horrible. Georgia, obviously, Georgia should, should have been number two. We should have been a number one, number two matchup. We should have been number one, yeah. Uh, I mean, they got Ohio, Ohio State at, at number two. As Georgia good has as, a good... Has, Georgia as, has better wins. As good as uh, Ohio State's offense looks, which it does look spectacular, the best team they've beat is Penn State. And they and, and they struggled with it, and for they himself. and they struggled with that. If it wasn't for a defense player, they might have lost that game. So, I don't think Georgia is number Georgia's number two, but on paper they're number three. So from this point on, we're going to go by the uh, playoff rankings instead of AP or coaches. So we have number one Tennessee at number three Georgia. This smells like a big game, doesn't it? Uh, it's it could be it could have some imp, <laughs> could have some implications. Uh, Georgia is favored. Uh, the line opened at nine. It dropped to eight and a half on Tuesday, and now on Wednesday, which which is when we're doing this bid, it has dropped to eight. I still think that is too uh, much of a points. Uh, I think even if Tennessee loses, I think it's a three to five point game. I don't think it's that big. Somebody actually put it a very good way. Tennessee beat Alabama. I mean, if Tennessee and Alabama played again, Alabama might win, but Alabama and Tennessee are both, I mean, really good teams. They're, they're really close to the same level of teams, aren't they? Okay, if Alabama was playing this game right now in Georgia, would they be, would Georgia be favored by eight over Alabama? They would be even. So I think it's a it's a little bit of Tennessee's history of not being good that people still don't believe. That's what I. That's actually a good analysis. Yeah, it's Tennessee's history. That that line of eight points is to, that's Tennessee's history. That's not this year. This year Tennessee has pulled the line. Pulled the line. I think they've covered the line uh, every game ex except for one. They covered the line. They beat an Alabama team that they were favored uh, by double digits. And they, they look spectacular they, on offense. They beat an LSU team that they is look hammered. They spectacular on offense. Oh, they've beat a, uh, a a Kentucky team that uh, their defense hadn't given up more than 14 points in an 11 game. So I think eight points is way too much. I personally think Tennessee will win. But I, but it's going to be, it's going to be, I, again, I think it's a three point game, either one, either way. Uh, dad, I've told dad on uh, one of our personal chats that I think mm -hmm. Georgia might possibly pull this Georgia, one out. Georgia should, the, the, the things that gets me, I think I might, might've made a note or two here because I just can't remember anything anymore. I'm getting too old for it. Uh, Georgia 
has the uh, lowest number of sacks in the SEC, which was shocking to me. And Kirby Smart's all about the defense. <clears throat> it's all about uh, Georgia only uh, has only sacked, only, only, only has 10 sacks through eight games this year. So that was a little bit of a shock to me. So that means Tennessee's offensive line should be, uh, unless they th throw some exotic blitzers or something, should be able to handle. Darnell Wright, uh, the tackle for Tennessee, is now, I think, uh, rated the number one tackle in the, the the United States. In his last 14 games, you want to know how many sacks Darnell Wright has given up? None. <laughs> and that's playing Alabama, LSU, Kentucky. That's playing a gauntlet schedule. Plus <laughs> last year, the last few games, because that six games of last year plus eight games of this year, he has given up not a single sack from that spot. That's pretty spectacular. That is pretty spectacular. So, so, so Tennessee should have a little bit, unless they throw the blitz. And then if you throw a blitz at Tennessee, you're playing right into their hand because there's a lot more grass out there to throw the ball into. <laughs> yep. You pull somebody out the grass, there's a hole. So this is probably Kirby like Smart's that. one of Kirby Smart's biggest challenges too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is one of Josh Heupel's biggest challenges too. And this is and this is going to shock you, shock you a little bit. Tennessee has the uh, most uh, has forced the most turnovers in the SEC. We forced sixteen turnovers. Sixteen nice turnovers nine interceptions. and nine interceptions, which both are number one in the conference. And the in the conference, uh, our run defense, uh, Tennessee has only average only given up three yards per carry. And that's against Alabama, Kentucky, LSU, and so on and so forth, so forth. Florida, so on and so forth. Running quarterbacks. We've actually given up three yards per carry. Uh, and Tennessee, Tennessee is averaging 4.5 yards a carry. So we're, we're averaging a pretty good I'm clip. surprised you actually wrote a note for that. I, I had to. I'm, I had to. I can't remember all this stuff. I'm, I'm too old. And, and honestly, Georgia's defense, this is – now Georgia's defense is the second, second, second rated defense in the defense country because they're only giving up a uh, little over, a little over ten points a game, but they uh, don't play that much because they're off the field pretty quick. They haven't had to play a whole lot of plays during a game because Georgia's offense has controlled the clock. Mm -hmm. The most plays they've played in a game this year, 71, and that was last week against Florida. And they got a little gassed there at one point. Tennessee averages averages 76 plays a game. And they uh, a lot of times get into the 80s, and close, close, close to 90 plays. So uh, that'll, that'll, that'll put a little pressure. Well, I'm going to give a little credit to Georgia's offense, though, for keeping the defense off the field. Yeah. This was something that actually shot me. Tennessee runs the ball more than Georgia. Which Georgia is mainly a two be a two running back system. Tennessee runs the ball more than Georgia. Georgia passes the ball more than Tennessee. Shouldn't it be the other way around? If you if because if you if you look at Tennessee, you think the high flying, five touchdown catching. No, we we actually run the ball more than we pass the ball. We use the run to open up the pass. Which makes sense. I mean, that's sort of logical what you would do. As a coach, but we actually use the uh, run. Uh, Georgia does have a pretty good r run defense. I think that will be the key. If Tennessee can run for, we're probably not going to average four and a half, but let's say we average three and a half to four yards a carry, and we can make it second and six, third and four, third and three, and you get those first downs, that's when tempo hits. Bam, 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 bam. If Tennessee gets up by 10 to 14 points, I think Georgia's in trouble. They'll they're, have to they, play catch up. They're not built for that. They're not built for catch up. They're not built for catch up. Uh, George, uh, Kirby, I think Kirby Smart is like nine and one. I mean, one and nine. He's, he's, I think he's only won one game when, when given up more than 31 points. Which is pretty. Well, you want the lowest Tennessee score this year is 34. So the stats are in Josh's favor. The stats are in our favor, and uh, and, and again, I I hate players getting hurt because I like playing just full bolt, full hill. But 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 Nolan Smith being out uh, will mean a lot. Out of their linebacker crew is going to mean a lot. Yeah, he uh, he was a big he was a big big part. The only thing that does scare me is uh, Georgia is a passing team. That's probably Tennessee's weakest point. 
It was it's, the secondary. It's the, it's the secondary. Now, last week, we were fantastic in the secondary. But we're not, Joe, we're not, we're not bad. If you can bring some, no, we are, we are, we are not a bad defense. You're just looking at an offense that scores 50 points a game and a defense that has 16 turnovers, which is number one in the SEC. Our defense is not bad. Our defense is just put on a spot <laughs> a lot because our offense scores in five plays and 75 yards. So our offense is, our defense is out there a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Let's see, if, if if you only give up, uh, you know, six, seven yards of pass, but the other team's passing 20 more times than what they would normally be, the repetitions, the time, the wear can get on to you a little bit. Uh, but Tennessee is the healthiest, the healthiest that so we have been. Some are split seeds. We are. We will both take Tennessee and the points. But we, we both will take, pick different teams. Tennessee plus eight I will take, but I will take Tennessee to win 41 to 38. I think it's a high scoring game. If if Tennessee can get to 35. I don't know. Maybe it's plus. just the pass getting to me, but I just don't have that itch. Mm -hmm. You know, can you blame me for all the past? No, games? no. And honestly, if Tennessee win, I love this season. I love this team. If we lose, then hallelujah. Let's, you know, we still got a really good shot of getting to the playoffs. If nothing else, dude, we're going to the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. I mean, no real negatives. There is zero negatives from this point. We beat Florida. We beat Alabama. We got a chance to go to the Sugar Bowl. We beat LSU. You can't forget that. Yeah, we beat LSU. Uh, I mean, come on.